Good afternoon, this is State Senator Karen McConaughey. I'm in the state capitol. It's Wednesday, March 14th. Uh, it's been a busy week. Uh, gun legislation has been the top uh, discussion all week long. A lot of bills uh, have been talked about. A lot of last minute changes. Um, I thought it was important to take a little bit of time today to talk about my vote on uh, three pieces of legislation uh, that were in the chamber today. Um, and you know, really kind of share some of my frustration with what's going on here. Um, the, the bills that were put in front of us did not reflect a bipartisan effort to try to strike a balance, a balance between um, yours and my right um, to own a gun and the responsibility, the balance between that and the responsibility to keep our communities safe. And so I just very quickly, I want to go through these. Um, the one no vote, the one piece of legislation I could not agree to is um, a, um, a raising the age to purchase a gun or a, a, an assault rifle to the age of 21. And on the surface, that sounds like that's a, a reasonable idea. But again, it's about this balance between a 20, I, if I have a 20 year old daughter and she lives on her own, I want her to be able to protect herself. If she is a law abiding citizen and follows the laws and is uh, responsible enough, she should have that right to be able to protect herself. That's an example of where I think that these ideas sound good and then when you really start to look at it, it begins to really infringe on yours and my second amendment rights. So with that being said, I think a good alternative would be maybe we need to, to have some additional requirements for a 20 or a 20 year old or a 19 year old uh, in order to purchase an assault rifle. I think also um, we so badly need to do better in identifying mental health challenges that sadly people face in this country. Uh, so many of the tragedies that we have, um, have made uh, have been devastating to us as a country, have been directly tied to an unchecked mental health uh, problem. So unfortunately, I was a no vote on that. I'm hoping that a, um, a, a, the governor will do an amendatory veto to make that in a more effective uh, piece of legislation. The next, the next one I voted present on, and that's, that's commonly referred to as the bump stock bill. And there's another uh, version of that, which I am a chief co-sponsor, and that's Senate Bill 2247, which is does outlaw bump stocks. I think we all agree there is no need for anybody to own a bump stock. However, the piece of legislation that was put in front of us to vote on today also um, creates a provision that allows local municipalities to start to make a decision about your right to own a weapon. Again, a major infringement on your Second Amendment rights. So, you know, part of the bill, very important, needs to be done, coupled with something that's an infringement, making it very, very difficult for a legislator like myself who wants to strike that balance to vote yes. So I voted present because I very much would like to see a bill come back that bans bump stocks without loading the bill up with a lot of other things. Uh, the, the bill I voted yes for was uh, the 72-hour waiting period. Uh, I, I know that there are some folks, uh, uh, go, gun owner right groups, that believe that that's unnecessary, but I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable to have a 72-hour uh, waiting period. That does not infringe on your right to own a weapon, but it does address some of the public safety concerns that people are concerned about. Um, I, I think there are a, a number of other bills that I would like to see heard. In fact, um, I have I've jumped on as a co-sponsor co on um, Senate Bill 3591 as an example. And that is a bill, and sorry, I'm reading from this, requires a person wishing to get a FOID card or purchase guns to be checked against the national terrorist watch list. It also strengthens prohibitions on persons with severe mental illness. Critical. If we're going to really address these kinds of issues, uh, these are the things that we need to we need to pass better legislation for. Um, th that same bill toughens provisions of the law requiring uh, state police to notify a local law enforcement agency when a FOID card has been revoked. 
Uh, it also allows uh, law enforcement to obtain a court order uh, for the surrender of weapons by a person who has, for whatever reason, lost their FOID card. That's just an example. We could go on and on with those, but that's an example. Um, I introduced a bill uh, that's called the Wrap Back uh, uh, Service Bill, and that is what that bill does is it allows at the federal level, um, federally they now have a record of arrest and prosecution background check system nationwide. States can opt in so that when there is a background check, normally, currently, if you get a background check, it's they, they take a snapshot at that particular time of what your criminal background looks like. By the new wrap back s uh, system, that will be ongoing so we can better track people who have been involved um, in illegal activity, people who have had trouble with law, might have helped in some of the situations that have been so devastating in the loss of life uh, recently. Um, last but not least, um, I, I also want to mention that the governor has just formed a public safety group. Um, it is made up of four legislators from all four caucuses. And the point of the uh, task force, uh, the group, is to address this issue of gun violence much more comprehensively than the bills today attempted to achieve. Uh, high emphasis on mental health uh, and a, uh, an emphasis on really tougher uh, sanctions against repeat gun offenders, centralized crime force deployment, uh, economic revitalization and interstate uh, criminal networks. These are just some of the things uh, that, that this new task force will look at that is designed to look at gun violence in a more comprehensive manner. So again, um, I know I'm not going to make everybody happy. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are people who feel that I haven't held the line as tightly on Second Amendment rights. There's going to be people who think I didn't go far enough. My job, I feel, representing the 33rd District is to do everything I possibly can to protect your constitutional rights, but at the same time, ensure that your kids and my kids are safe. And so, um, tough day, uh, tough week, and we'll keep working at it, and um, keep those cards and letters coming. Let me know how you feel about the issue.